The following program is seen statewide on California Public Television. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser, and here we are on this beautiful, windy springtime morning, standing right out in the middle of this spectacular display of wildflowers. This is about as pretty as it gets. Now, right now, we are located in the eastern part of San Luis Obispo County. This is a very remote area. We're about an hour, about an hour and a half west of the town of Bakersfield, about an hour east of the town of San Luis Obispo. And this area is definitely remote and pristine and big and beautiful, which is exactly what we were looking for. In fact, we've been told that when you visit this place, it's kind of like a snapshot in time. It's like going back in time because this whole area has barely been touched over the years by civilization. I'm excited about this adventure and I hope you are too. We're gonna to be spending the whole day right here in San Luis Obispo County at Carrizo Plain National Monument, which is definitely one of California's golden parks. I love you, California, your greatest place of all. Okay, here we go on this very windy morning, but I guess, boy, it's really windy up here. But this is part of what springtime is all about here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, explain to all, oh, wow, look at this. No wonder you wanted us to start up on top of this hill. Explain to all of us exactly where we are right now and what we're looking at. We're here in the Carissa Plain National Monument, and in um, 2001, President Clinton signed a proclamation making this a national monument for significant biological and cultural resources. What we're looking at today is Soda Lake. It's a large um, alkali wetland, and in the wintertime, it has flat, um, water in it, and in the summer, it's dry, and it turns white, just like the crust, but all the time, it has a high water table, so there's water right under the crust during all the time, and it's a great habitat for win overwintering birds that come migrating into this area. Boy, this is a big lake, and in the summertime, if we were here, it would just be all white and crusty, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to see any water. No, you wouldn't, but there's a high water table, so even if it looks dry, you walk across, you will sink into the mud. All right, so is this a saline lake? What's the technical word for it? Alkali. Alkaline lake. Okay, we've got the big lake, and then over here, this is what I was kind of expecting to see, this broad expanse of, it looks like a, a, a flat plain surrounded by mountains. Yes, it is. Most of this area is um, endangered species habitat. We have a number of listed endangered species in the Carrizo Plains, and they like this large um, grassland habitat. And this is kind of a remnant of kind of what was over in the San Joaquin Valley. So the whole San Joaquin Valley used to look like this before it was made into an agricultural area. Well, some of this is representative of that area, definitely. This is spectacular, just as far as you can see, with one little ribbon of a road going through here. And that's part of the, the beauty and the joy of coming here. Any place that's off the beaten track in California, I like. And this is what you would call off the beaten track, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. And um, it's kind of amazing because we're actually between some of the largest metropolitan areas. LA's about four hours away and San Francisco's about three hours away. And this is kind of one of the unique areas in California that um, is a secret. Yeah, it is kind of a secret. <laughs> and, and here on this beautiful springtime day, we've only got one, two, three, four, five cars down there and two of them are ours. <laughs> so even in the beauty of springtime, this place is not heavily visited, but I imagine the people who have discovered this place over the years 
keep coming back, don't they? Yes, they do. And that's one of the, the draws to this area is because um, it is one of the areas in California where you can go and sometimes you could drive all day, especially on a summer day, and not see another vehicle. because yeah, it gets hot out here in the summer, doesn't it? Very hot. <laughs> well, i tell you what, this was the perfect place to start our adventure because we're just standing on top of this on top of this hill with this 360 panorama around us with the lake and the wildflowers off in the distance and the hills and the blue skies. This really does kind of get you in the mood, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Now, are you going to take us to some exciting places or are we just going to stand here and look at the lake all day? Well, I think we better get going because we have a lot more on our schedule. All right, and I know where we're going too because there's only one road and there it is right over there. That's where we're going to be going, down that road to continue our venture here at Carrizo Plain National Monument on this very windy day. Okay, we have left the overview and Jonna, you have brought us to, I didn't, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this much color as far as you can see this late in the spring, is it always like this or is this just because of the heavy rains we had this year? This is a, typically we get some uh, gold fields, these yellow ones we were walking through are called gold fields and we will get some of these patches um, during the time of year, but usually as much and extensive as it is, it's because of the heavy rainfall. Wow, look at this. This is just spectacular. You've had to have had a lot more people coming out this year than normally just just to see this. Yes, it's been quite um, quite a lot of few visitors coming out and they have really been enjoying this area. But last year during this time, we had some snow during this time of year. So the weather out here is very unpredictable, but people are really enjoying themselves today. Now, are we walking out onto the lake itself, the part that's dried up? Was there, did there used to be water right in here? Yes, there used to be water here a little bit um, late earlier this year, but as you can tell, I'm starting to sink a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't want to bring it up. But. <laughs> you want to be careful because you get out a little bit further and we'll start sinking into some really heavy, thick mud. Now, is this salt on the top of this, on the top of the ground? It's sodium sulfate and um, they actually had some mining operations here on the lake at around the turn of the century. That's what I was getting at. Could you actually do something with this? What if I tasted this right now? What would it taste like? It tastes a little salty. I want to taste it. <laughs> Very salty. Yes, it is. It's almost like salt. It's um. The pH is almost as much as um, the ocean, as much as the uh, salt water. Oh boy, <laughs> you are really going down in this thing quick. This is very deceiving, isn't it? Yes, it is. People, because it looks dry out there. It looks dry, but it's not. And even in the summer when it's all been baked all season long, it's still wet right under the surface. You know this, I, I really am glad you brought us here because this shows the contrast between the white dry lake and these beautiful wildflowers out here and the mountains off in the distance. What are we looking at here? What are these mountains? This is the extension of the Caliani Range and actually I um, wanted to mention that this area, we cooperatively manage this area with the Nature Conservancy and Fish and Game and some of their properties are up in this area and we all manage this as one big unit together and so it's been really successful out here. Boy, thank goodness this has been preserved because this is just an amazing place and these flowers just kind of make this whole visit today very special. You don't want to get out from in the middle of all of these things. <laughs> they're just great. And they're very fragrant. Before we leave the lake we have come across some footsteps of some visitor who looks to me like they had some trouble <laughs> getting across here. Do you ever have to come pull people out? Well sometimes uh, we've had actually aircraft land on the lake thinking it was a dry lake bed and they were very surprised when they found out that their plane started sinking. And what happened to the plane? They couldn't, they couldn't take off. No, um, we brought a sky crane out and they had a sky crane lift it out and take you it over. You are kidding. <laughs> no, take it over to a local airport. So if you're flying over this lake in a small plane and you see what looks like a hard dry lake, 
don't land, don't right? Land. <laughs> don't land. <laughs> you know, what I love about this is the just the vastness of all of this. Just this open space with no one here, with no traffic, with no noise, with no people, just the sound of the wind. And you know, Huel, that's that's why people really love the planes. It's because just what you explained. And the, the crease of planes is at the top of the Tembler Mountains and it goes all the way across to the base of the Caliente Mountains. And it's just vast and open and that's what people love. How big is this national monument? It's 250,000 acres. It's about seven miles wide and about 40 miles long. You can see Mount Pinos in the distance with the snow, which kind of just kind of ca caps off the Carrizo. Boy, this is this is just now. It doesn't look like this all year round. No. It probably turns brown in the summertime, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it does. But you know, even in the summer, in the late evenings, when the sun goes down, the Tumbler Mountains gets this hue of purple across them, and it's very pretty and it has its own uniqueness in the summer, even though it's very hot and not for everybody. Well, I got to tell you, I'd, I'd love to be here in the summer. I'd love to be here in the fall. I'd love to be here in the winter. But I am so thankful that you invited us to be here in the spring because I think I'll remember this, this right here for the rest of my life. This is as pretty and as overwhelming a place a feeling as I've ever had anywhere in California. Okay, now we're heading down this dirt road to visit another layer, to see another layer, another chapter in the history of Carrizo Plain. We found a house, but this just isn't any old house. This house is very much a part of what the Carrizo Plain is all about, isn't it, Jana? Yes, it is. This is the Salcedo Ranch, and in 1869 is when we had first set settlements on the Carrizo, and this was the first ranch house that was built. It was built by Chester Brumley. And we're developing, we've kind of restored this house back to its original state for that time period, and we're going to have an interpretive site here as, that includes all the outbuildings as well. Now, how many ranches would have been out here at one time? This was a big cattle raising area, wasn't it? Yes, there was um, cattle ranches as well as sheep ranches. And there's large ranches, they, they, um, anywhere from 2,000 to 5,000 acres. And one on the end was 30,000 acres. So this is going to be restored. and Well, it's actually restored, but you're going to have exhibits and tours. And all of this will be coming up as part part of the Carrizo Plain experience when people come out here. Yeah, because the farming history, the farming and ranching history is, is part of the Carrizo and it's a very important part and we want to interpret that. So we'll be bringing people in here on tours and talking about that history. Now what was the name of the family again? Chester Brumley was the first one here and he was the one that um, built this house. And look at the view the Brumleys would have had sitting on their front porch and looking out at this. This is spectacular and the wonderful thing about it is the view that we're looking at today is exactly the same view the Brumleys would have had over 150 years ago. Yes, it's, it's spectacular. Well, I thought I had seen everything. I thought I had oohed and odd about as much as possible. But now you have brought us to a place that I have never seen anything like this anywhere in California, any time of the year. This is absolutely spectacular with these different colors. And you say all of these are native California wildflowers. Yeah, that's correct. This is one of my favorite spots in the monument too. What are we looking at? Well, what we're looking at today is the blue flowers are lupin, and of course the orange ones are California poppy. These are our California poppies, and boy, look how they just pop out at you in the sun. I think we've hit a perfect time of day to see all of this. You've got the yellow, the purple, the orange, and it just goes, it covers this whole hillside. Now is this, 
normal? Is this is this a normal? I mean, do you see this every spring out here? I'm afraid I'm going to step on something here. I don't want to step on it, but people have been coming here to take pictures all spring, haven't they? Yeah, this is very popular with the, the tourists here today, but typically this area here does have this concentration of flowers and these different colors, but not every year. This year light is a very good year for wildflowers here on the plains. She's snapping pictures of the flowers, and there is no such thing as a bad picture out here, is there? There is no such thing. <laughs> They're all gorgeous. Have you ever been out here before? No, never. Why not? That's a good question. Where do you live? Los Angeles. See, you're three <laughs> hours away. I know, and we finally did it. From all of this. I know. It's like a wonderland. <laughs> really, it's hard to believe. Yeah, I've been all over California, and this is this spot is one of the most beautiful spots I've ever seen in my whole life. And you know, not just the wildflowers. I think it's just this whole, the whole area, everything. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's the whole area. Yeah, this has been on my list for many years. Really? Oh yeah, I have a long list. <laughs> and so every year I try to make it to some spectacular place. Well, it's mm. kind of like in the middle of nowhere, it isn't is it? It is in the middle of nowhere, yes. <laughs> well, maybe that's yeah. a good thing. Well, in a way it is because uh, fewer people, you know, trample it down. Yeah. But the amazing thing is that I bumped into you here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Well, it just, I don't know whether it's because it all mixes with the vast horizon out here or, or just the vibrance of the color, the time of day. When you look out here, it just, it just, the colors just burst upon you. Yeah, and don't forget, we're just looking at the, the northern half of the monument and we won't be able to see the southern half today, but um, there's a lot more hidden treasures out here to see. So we're just seeing a small part of the monument today. That's correct. We're in what, the northern end? Yes. And look down here, this is the southern end down here that goes for miles and miles and miles in this direction. Yes, and you're gonna find different pockets of um, fauna and flora that's gonna be spectacular as well. So it's just something to come out and explore. Well, can we, before we leave here, can we just sit down in the flowers? <laughs> Let's just sit here and enjoy this afternoon just for a minute amongst the flowers at Carrizo. Civilization, people, cars. We finally found some and Cindy, we are standing here in front of this beautiful, well, this is your new visitor center over here. Well, it's not so much new as much as, it's been here about 10 years. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Wow. Well, we just met. Your name is? Cindy McQuinney with we, the Bureau of Land Management. We have broken off our tour for just a minute because we wanted to see the visitor center. We wanted to meet you and we wanted to kind of get a feel from you as to what this place is all about. Who comes here and why? And how do you sell this place to get people to come here? The, bi the biggest thing that the monument uh, gives to people is escape because we not only are for the individuals who are biologically interested or botanically interested, it's for anyone who wants to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. And isn't it interesting yeah. that so few people who live really right in this area even know about this place? I uh, am born and raised in Bakersfield, California, which is one hour and 15 minutes from here. And I'm not young. And the individuals that I see every day, they say, where do you work? And I go, the Carrizo Plain National Monument. And they said, well, how can you do that from Bakersfield? And I said, well, it's only an hour away. And they have never heard of the Carrizo Plain National Monument. But it's okay because people are finding us once they come and I get emails and phone calls over and over from the Carrizo family because that's what they become. They become so interested in the management, everything to be protected and still remain as simple and quiet as it is today. Are you all relaxed? Are, are you stress-free? Are you... What are you? We are <laughs> we are relaxed. We're stress-free. We're enjoying our uh, beautiful uh, 
land here. Look at this. I know it's gorgeous. Beautiful. Can it be more this gorgeous? Is just. <laughs> you haven't seen so many flowers out here in so many years. All the colors. <laughs> yeah, but you know, beyond the flowers, I think it's just the vastness, mm -hmm. the open space, oh, the quietness. Love. We live in this area and love it out here because there's nothing. People will say, well, what is there in the Carrizo that you love? What's there to see? It's like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love it. <laughs> this is the most beautiful, beautiful. nothing I have ever yes. seen in my life. Yeah, peaceful too, like you said. Okay, we're walking out across this huge, big grassy plain called the Elkhorn Plain, which is part of the Cariso Plain, the mountains off in the distance, and we have hooked up with Kathy, who has magically appeared out here in the middle of the grassy area here. Kathy, you are here at this beautiful place, and you are here to tell us about the critters that call the Cariso Plain home, starting with the good old giant kangaroo rat. Giant kangaroo rat, and what's interesting is it to those who don't know what they're looking at, this just looks like kind of a cleared little area here. You see it's different from the tall grass, but this all means something, doesn't it, Kathy? Yes, yes, this designates the, what we call a precinct for the giant kangaroo rat. And down below the ground, um, this nocturnal animal stays and uh, comes up and clips around his precinct so that all of the the seed heads that you see are that are gone he clips them down and cures them and then takes it down for food to store for another year so you mean this whole area right here is cleared off at night by the kangaroo rat that's living look at this camera and this is what's really interesting that's a kangaroo rat house down there isn't it yes it is now, is there a kangaroo rat in that hole right now? Yes, there should be. Because it looks be. like when you look down in there, it's kind of been covered over with dirt. Yeah, that's something that they do um, usually as a protective feature to uh, backfill their burrow so that other predators cannot get it back in. How far down is he right now? Oh, uh, up to maybe a meter. Really? Yeah. And how many kangaroo rats are out here right now? Oh, hundreds thousands, thousands. <laughs> and we're not going to see a one of them because they only come out at night yeah probably not sometimes in when the weather is milder you'll see them out during the daytime well we've got a picture of a kangaroo rat we're going to put up on the screen right now because you monitor them very carefully out here don't you these are protected animals yes they're a federally listed species they're protected by the federal government what they're, makes them so special why uh, are they protected they're protected because uh, much of the habitat that they once uh, lived in is now gone so the carrizo plain is very important for sustaining populations of the giant kangaroo rat they got me climbing yet another hill, but this is worth the climb because people who love history and love geology, this is a jackpot right here. Jonna, tell us exactly what we're looking at right here. Well, we're here at Wallace Creek, and this is an offset drainage of the San Andreas Fault. It actually, if you look to our left, you could, that drainage that goes below was actually moved right here below our feet. That's offset 433 meters and we get major earthquake events out here and the the ground shifts about 30 feet one way horizontally and three feet vertically. When they're earthquakes. When they're so earthquakes. when would this have been formed right here? Well from here from this point here to that other offset drainage 10,000 years it's shifted. It's taken that long wow. to shift. And is this one of the best places to come see something like this that's very visual and you don't have any doubt about what you're seeing. Yes, this is one of the best places and geologists and visitors come from all over the world just to see it. Uh, because of the kind of climate that we have, all of the features are very well preserved. So this is as good a shot of the San Andreas Fault mm -hmm. as you're gonna find anywhere in California. I mean, this really says it right here. 
Unless you can fly over the fault line with an airplane. Yeah. This is pretty good, yeah. Well, there are people down there walking. Now, do they know what they're seeing when they're down there, or are they just walking? Are they just lost? <laughs> well, we do have a self-guided tour, so they are on the tour, and they have a pamphlet, and they will be knowing exactly what they're um, seeing as they go down there. Because this is very dramatic, actually, when you look down this way and realize that this was all created by the Earth shifting in onto two different plates. Exactly. From the San Andreas Fault to this amazing view right here, which really says it all. This panorama looking out over the plain, over toward the mountains. This has been, well, thank you all very much. This has been thank an absolutely much. wonderful day. Much. When we got here, we kind of said we wanted to spend the day here because we had heard it was big and beautiful and pristine and a snapshot that kind of takes you back in time because it has been so little uh, of an impact as far as civilization is concerned. And it lived up to all of that and more because we got to see the wildflowers. <laughs> so this has just been spectacular. We're talking about 250,000 acres. Mm -hmm. And how many people come here every year? Is there any estimate? Yeah, there's an estimate about 10,000 or, or between 10 and 20,000 come a the year. The whole year? Well, because just six months out of the year is when it's pleasurable, and the other six months it's really hot, so we don't get as high of vegetation during that time of year. So you're talking about maybe 30,000 people here the whole year. Yeah, well, with the exceptions of years like this, which obviously is going to spike the visitation. Yeah, up. but it's still <laughs> a very low visitation rate exactly. compared to the beauty of what you see here. Right. This really is one of those hidden... Mm -hmm gems here in California, isn't it? We like to think so. Well, we uncovered it. <laughs> we saw the, even saw the kangaroo rats. Thank you all very much Thank for you. a wonderful Thank day. This wonderful place, this huge place, this vast place, this almost untouched place called the Carrizo Plain National Monument. 250,000 acres. There it is right out there. This beautiful place that is definitely one of California's golden parks. What a wonderful, glorious day we have had in this park. What a beautiful place. And if you'd like to go on this adventure again or share it with your family and friends, it's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727 and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.